suffering defeat after defeat. That man's body was reaching its limit, breaking down. But he couldn't die yet. The man had a job that must be done. To defeat his twin brother. Dante. Separate man from devil with the strength of the Yamato. And eventually, the man became a true devil. to hold together my crumbling flesh with what little demonic power I have left, but I'm approaching my limit. In separating and regaining my human soul, I've realized the gravity of the crime I've committed. I've realized how important everything was, everything I've thrown away in my pursuit of power. Is that why you went to find Dante? Yes. Foolish. I thought that maybe he could change my... Maybe fix. Maybe right my wrong. Tell me. Was this fool before you, right? I'm not your mommy, V. You're a big boy. And you need to see this through. Dante's war. That for Road Rash. I am glad we finally have that reveal out of the way, just so they can stop playing coy with it being Virgil. It's Virgil. We've known it's Virgil. It was always going to be Virgil. And this mission is the Yamato. Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Demo May Cry 5. We have something even more hype than a really heavily handed uh, foreshadowed reveal of the villain and a popular character who's returned to the game. We have Cavalier! We have Cavalier and we have maxed this out. Crossline, Slipstream, all this good stuff. Breaking. It is our long-awaited motorcycle weapon. And we are going to test it out just seconds from now. By the way, I'd like y'all to go back to my Devil May Cry 3 Let's Play where I am lamenting how DMC3 doesn't have a motorcycle devil arm after he takes Lady's bike and rides it up the tower, fighting along the way. Because here we go! Some of Cavalier's moves are directly lifted from that scene. So here's the wild thing. This was going to be a Nero weapon. It was going to be a Nero weapon. He was going to have a motorcycle all 
uh, in addition to the Red Queen and the Blue Rose. They originally tried to make a motorcycle weapon in both Devil May Cry 2 and 3, but couldn't settle on something they liked in time. So now I get to live in the best timeline, where I'm just swinging these two whirly gig saws around. And that's exactly what they are. It's the best. It is the best. And I love this weapon. I love everything that it does. And it's a wild one. Because it has some, um, I, I wouldn't say contextual moves. But it has a lot that is dependent on timing and constantly hitting the enemy with the right timing to get follow-ups. Uh, like, unfortunately, the cross switch got away before that final hit. Also, this is going to be another kind of annoying gimmick, the level. Destroying them and enemies being cut off from you and them trying to trap you in these is not that bad. The problem is small arenas in an interior space and then these things crowding up the camera at times. That's the only thing I don't like about this mission. Uh, however, it's always going to be a fun one because it's your very first opportunity to really explore this weapon. And it's so good. It's so tight. And, oh, you get massive airtime with it, which is going to come in, into play much later in the mission. Uh, for the secret mission of this one. Uh, uh, uh. And now we just have more stuff to switch between, too. So we have even more variety. Oh, my God, and just... It's a lot like Osiris, actually, which was one of my favorite weapons from DMC Devil May Cry. In that it can just scoop enemies right off the ground into the air with ease. Osiris always had that scoop. And Cavalier very much has that as well. Oh, he's kind of embedded in the wall doing that, huh? Come on now. When they're going slow, it's a, it's a lot harder to time the... the um, just frame Royal Guard, as opposed to when they just blitz at you. Oh, let's not lose that triple S. There we go. Definitely not losing it there. Oh! Uh-uh! God, yes. It is a motorcycle you ride with the style button on Swordmaster, and then when you're just regularly swinging it, it just splits into dual-wielding Whirligig saws from Bloodborne. Oh, yes! God, and we still have more to go! Oh my god. I'm very happy. And we also get, like, a really old-fashioned style level in this. Uh, with... They're not... Y you can branch the paths out on this level slightly, it's but it's also a little bit more of a puzzle level. Sorry. You wouldn't mind mine. Where we have to get the blood flowing to each of these grooves. Uh, to weigh down the thing and cause a mechanism to retract the statue so we can continue through, like, this underground labyrinth. So the unique thing about Cavalier is huh. it has this mechanic called the gear wheel. Guess that explains how the pools down there get filled. Yes, good observation, Dante. Uh, gear wheel. So attacks stay active on enemies, as you've seen, for a really long time. Uh, and there is also this timing element to it, because of course there is. Of course, there's always something a little bit more under the hood, no pun intended. Uh, you can spam the attack button to do a combo, you know, to do your basic combo, but you get a better, faster, stronger, flashier version of the combo if you tap attack just as it glows and sparks. Doing it well activates top gear. Oh my god. Um, Perfect timing, because of course the motorcycle buzzsaw sword has a just frame element. Is called- oh shit, she landed on me. Uh, it's called over gear, or over top gear. Over the top gear, something like that. Just break that grab with the DT. Uh, uh, uh. This is so much video game going on. Oh my god. It's just so much. Oh, oh my god, yes. Oh no. She high profiled it actually. She reared up and it avoided the uh, hitbox for that last hit. 
So yeah, when you see a chain just kind of fizzle out, and it doesn't look as spectacular, that means I got the timing wrong. But when you see it, like, shooting out crazy hit sparks, and sparking purple and red, and doing extra spins and extra revs and shit, that means I've either uh, timed it well, or I've timed it perfectly. And just gotten a little bit more, like, the, the follow-ups get so much more savage. And broke out of that before I had a chance to get hit. Whoop, this is not gonna go. Yeah, it didn't. I usually finish these enemies off so quickly that I actually tend to forget what they can do. You don't usually let them attack too much. Uh, they have the rapid fire ice spikes that kind of fire out like delayed summon swords. They have the, the uh, geyser that erupts under your feet. And a few more things. Two, three. But also, as you go further into the game, and you get these harder, tougher enemy compositions, it really becomes a thing where they're way more likely to get their spells off. It's way harder to focus fire them as you go in. Oop. Ooh, that turned me around quite a bit, that camera. Uh, it's also really unfortunate to get turned around in this place because they cram the blue and the purple orbs into some kind of odd spots. They're just like, oh hey, you missed this turn off here. Well, good luck when you come back into this mission the second time because you're not getting that now. Oh, we can just jump around that. Nice. Okay, we're taking the right path, if I remember right. Oh, I'm coming down from this Cavalier hype. And this... This is a weapon that I've been playing with. I've had my time to enjoy. I'm still this hype over it. Fuck yes. Oh my god, Cavalier! So we have three guns now. We have three Devil Arms. We have one more each. We have one more gun. And it's one of the cooler ones in a bit. Not quite Pandora, but you'll see. And then an amazing weapon coming up. This has got to be the best suite of Devil Arms Dante has had in, a, in one game. Right? Balrog. Just Balrog alone. Oh, technically we have... Mm, well, let's not say. We have Balrog. We have Cavalier. Yep. And then Sparta is always Here a known quantity. Place. Sparta and Rebellion. Uh, is this one of the turnoffs I was looking for? Uh, yeah, I do believe it is. There's usually a purple orb in there. I've already gotten it, though. If that's the one I was thinking of. Always love a good full-length uh, prop shredder. Both the... Like, both of the different rotations on it. And this arena is a lot more aggressive about trying to trap you. Uh, oh, oh. God, yes! Come down with that, because it also has that slam. Oh, I love that so much! I love this weapon's moveset, and we haven't even seen it all! There is still way more to see. The only problem with it is, against some of the grunts, some of the weaker enemies, they will not live long enough for you to really get a good sampling of what this can do. Whereas some of the bigger enemies, they have an easier time breaking out of hit stun. But still, it is such a heavy hitting weapon. It's so good. Oh man. So it's Suno's. Damn, there's a lot of unintentional puns in this one. Now that I'm thinking about it. Oh! Insuno's driving desire was uh, to prove this style of action game could still thrive on its own merits. And man, I don't know how it did, but I hope the answer is yeah, it can, because otherwise it's DMC and Nier Automata being like recent successes. <laughs> it was 2 million as of uh, GDC, which is promising.
And here is the other enemy that got a little bit of the, uh, got a little bit of the Dream Runner's move set. It's like a cross between the Dream Runner teleports and, uh, the Blitz. It's actually a little bit harder to time than I, than I uh, remember. Yeah, th uh, both of those were imperfect. They were not just frame. Oops. That's not quite what I wanted to do. I was switching to uh, Swordmasters specifically so I could block this with uh, Prop Shredder. Which is another pretty decent option since Prop Shredder is just a really big hitbox that stays active for a long, long time. So it's really good at clashing and deflecting. Like that. Oh, I did not follow that up for shit, though. Uh, I love Furies. My timing is very bad right now, though. Uh, that can be a hard one, especially if you're trying to parry the Prop Shredder. For now, we'll be okay with just Royal Guarding. Let's try. Yeah, there we go. That was not a just frame release, but that was still good enough to do what I needed it to do. That was a little bit ugly. As we fight more Furies, uh, hopefully they won't all go that eh, poorly. By the way, if you have been impressed with, like, some of the clothing and hair tech, especially the way, like, say, his coat moves around as he runs, know that all of the clothing materials that they, uh, scanned in with their, at their photogrammetry studio, the cost of all of those, the clothes that they, that they scanned in was, uh, quoted to be about as much as a small car. Also, if you have ever looked online to try to buy uh, Dante's new coat, or uh, especially Nero's, they do cost as much as a small car just to buy the props and the replicas. Holy shit. I would love Nero's coat, but goddamn, I do not have that kind of money. Oh, all the sparks! <laughs> and pretty much everything... Uh, that Cavalier does is some kind of string like that. It is a multi-hitting combo-based string. So everything has some kind of... Oh, I didn't even see that bride! Damn! Everything has some kind of uh, string or a follow-up. It is ridiculous. Oh, he's gonna turn around at the last moment and hit all of them! Good shit. Ooh, no. Ooh, 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 good. Good, good, good. This is alright. This boy is a problem. Oh, I landed as he swung, but I didn't clash with him. That is unfortunate. I can't believe the rose and the gunfire with Gunslinger was enough to destroy the plating on his head. Get some charged up Polina Ann in there. Oh, I love that. Aw, aw, aw. All the little butt slams. That sucks. If he hadn't turned, that would have hit. <laughs> and then I could have distorted it. Oh no! What's going on with you, friend? Why are you being like this? That was an ugly finish. Holy shit, that's two ugly fights in a row. Oh no. Oh man, it's becoming a lot of video game. There's such a good curve once you get to Dante's section of the game. Because by now they've introduced so many enemies that they can really start mixing things up and there's still more enemies to be introduced. You have so many tools now, and you've had time to acclimate to most of them. It's smooth. Oh, I love Devil May Cry 5 a bunch. <laughs> Oh, 
That's three out of four. I want to keep Mr. Demon King waiting. Got to pick up the pace. It's three out of four because we activated two and we came into this section with one already flowing. And then we also have to keep in mind how we get over to uh, the, the, the blue orb. That's something that I'll backtrack for once we get the last, uh, the last little riblet of blood flowing. And if I get too lost, there's always that handy little map function. Or not the map, um, like the little guidance thing. I want to call it the, the dead space button where you hit it and it just points you towards your objective. Minus the line. Oh, and Cavalier is so good against these dudes. Good against riots. Good against just about everything. The damage output is immense. Yeah, you. I'm very surprised that it's the little flip that it just did did not screw me. Had to try to parry that. Just want to make sure I'm ignited. Huh. The Capoeira move set is the best. Like this is by far my favorite, um, uh, my favorite fist weapon move set. I can't believe I got hit by that. This is what happens when you when you commentate during a game like this. Just little weird things will happen to you. You will fuck up in ways that you never expect to. Oh, and then we still have the Ice Witch guarding yourself inside the cage. And we can see from here, the last... Oh, son of a bitch. The last little uh, pulsing pustule. The clot, I guess, holding back the blood. It's kind of bad because you would think that this is really giving a jump start to the Clyphoth, right? That feeds on human blood. Like, this is just a fondue fountain for the Clyphoth. But there's four out of four. Should be all of them. Uh, and there is one more Nidhogg hatchling in here. Since I used my brain this much. But it's not actually necessary. You don't need to do this. Uh, that is there, so you can open up that lower Nidhogg if you took the upper route through the level. So it just opens up an alternative pathway. And lets you continue on if you want. Uh, but we, what we are doing is looking for this. This is an easy blue orb to miss. Because those stairs that get you up here blend so well into the rest of the rubble. Hey, that's nice. We're definitely not going to be maxed out by the time we hit the end of the game. Because I know I've already missed a few blue orbs, but this is fine. We were never going for the 100% anyway. We are doing every secret mission as a reminder, and we have one more that's not too well concealed at the end of this mission coming up. Oh, nope, we want to follow uh, the groove. We'll follow the rhythm. And boom. You can see the uh, where that Nidhogg hatchling goes right there on the, on the second floor. But again, that's just for an alternate route through the level. Oops. Always love Swordmaster for those, so you don't have to rely on the Helmbreaker. Especially because you can't enemy step off of those, so you can't correct. Now, up here, 
we just turn around. And the secret mission is right here. And this is a good one. It's an oldie, but a goodie, and much easier in this one. Uh, because in previous games, when they gave you a uh, You Have to Stay Airborne secret mission, you were heavily, heavily, heavily reliant on enemy stealth, which is just jumping off an enemy's head and resetting all your stuff, including your double jump. In this one, not so much. Uh, because remember I mentioned Cavalier has insane airtime? Well, we're gonna start off with a double jump, or with an enemy step, or I guess we're not. I guess I'm gonna misjudge depth. And <laughs> do nothing! Uh, Trickster's really good here, too. I should have just started off with that. But no, we have ourselves lined up with a shadow this time. There we go. And now we'll just do this for a bit. Like, you lose virtually no height. And then we also have our air taunt. If we need to gain more height, we have Trickster, we have uh, Rainstorm that gives us a little bit of height. There are a lot of tools in your belt to do that secret mission easily. And then you can always just do the classic, you know, El Clasico, which is relying entirely on enemy step. Uh, or jump canceling, too. You know, just do a little... Air raid, enemy step, air raid, enemy step, something like that. Either way, pretty easy secret mission for being so late. I think that one could be a lot harder. It's just undertuned for the tools that you have in this game. Either way, that's pretty much the whole mission. There are no fights left. Just a little bit of somber music as we... Make our way back to uh, Dante's childhood home, which we've seen twice now. In the Virgil cutscene before this mission, in the interlude, and in a different interlude when we flash back to uh, his mom hiding him in the closet during the invasion. was activated in me once when Virgil lovingly jammed this through my chest <laughs> I always wondered why did my father give me the rebellion okay what are you muttering <laughs> over the years I've been stabbed and jabbed by a number of things but who would have ever guessed have you lost your mind there's a demon to destroy! Kill yourself later! I'll help! If the Yamato can separate man from devil, then what about the rebellion? Wow! You are absorbing the Sparta!
Dante. Would you look at that? Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one.